car. What is it? What do you see in your mind's eye? Trust your first impression. Like a, like a blue aura around a planet. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about this blue aura. Mm. How, it's how nice. big is it? How big is this aura? Mm. It's, it's, it's not very big. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a like a horizon or a... Mm -hmm. It's like the planet looks like like backlit a little bit. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. I feel like I'm looking at it from someplace else. Mm -hmm. So acclimate yourself into that place. What does this place look like? It feels kind of like I'm laying in a bed like this. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, but it feels like a like a spaceship. Mm-hmm. All right. A little bit. So take a look around you. Look at the walls of this place. They're very smooth. Smooth walls. Mm-hmm and curved and like um I'm laying down so that um that they could they could heal me mm -hmm. um, so I'd like for you to look at your body now. What does your body look like? Pretty tall. Mm -hmm. Pretty tall. Um. What does your body look like? Long, long limbs. Long limbs. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. What color are these limbs? Pale. Pale. Mm hmm. Can you see your feet? Mm hmm. What do they look like? With long toes. Mm hmm. How many toes do you see? Ten. Mm hmm. Five on each one. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, what else? I feel like, like, like I have some sort of, you know, costume or garb or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what does it look like? Some silver, it's a different material. Mm -hmm. Is it thin or thick? What does it's it feel like? Very thin, mm -hmm. um, but it's also got some, like a little bit of structure. Mm -hmm. And it's a long, like a dress, like a kind of like a robe dress. Mm -hmm. and I keep feeling <coughs> a crown. Mm -hmm. Are you male or female? Female. Mm -hmm. What do you look like? Stately. Hmm. Some sort of violet somewhere. Mm hmm. Violet in the clothing? No. Or in the body? Somewhere 
around me. Mm-hmm. Is this an aura around you? I think so. Mm -hmm. What does this aura represent? What does the violet mean? It's very pretty. Mm -hmm. It's royal. It's a royal aura? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to acclimate yourself completely into that body now. And tell me about yourself. What it is that you're doing on this in this place? You say you need healing. What's happened? There was just a lot of work and um Uh, like a rejuvenation. When the violet came, it felt better. Mm -hmm. What happened to you before? Why did you need this rejuvenation? The work was... The work was heavy, mm -hmm. and um, my my legs felt a little bit sore. Mm -hmm. um, so this place where you're being rejuvenated, what is this place? Where are you? It's a nice place. Mm -hmm. Describe it for me. People here are good and they're just so, so nice. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of silver. And maybe they're blue. Mm -hmm. The people who are there are blue? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do they look like? They're, they're also very tall. Mm -hmm. Have um, big eyes. Big eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are they humanoid? Uh, partly. Mm -hmm. And also, like um, it's the closest thing I could say is like, like a. Like a fish, a little bit, but it's not that. It's like I don't have a word for it. It's mm -hmm. like a. Um, I just keep seeing like, like the the tops of their heads are like, um, they're like almost like beautiful little spires that come off of them, and um, and their sh heads are still shaped like. Like peoples. Mm -hmm. What are these spires made out of? They're, I don't know, fleshy stuff or mm -hmm. cartilage stuff. Or Do they have hair? No. Mm -hmm. They have, um, they have like these very wise faces. Mm -hmm. So wise and so this place where you are is this their place? It's I, it's the spaceship, but I don't know if it's theirs. But they make the most beautiful noises. Mm, what do they sound like? It's so high pitched and and uh, it's like a little bit like war. It's so light and 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 precise. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what they're saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do they tell you? Tell me the conversation that they're having with you now. It's... It's frequencies to alleviate the heavy frequencies. And they go very precise and tune all the things that were 
in a in a in a dense place. Is this your specialty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they do this for everyone? Maybe. Let's find out. Connect with them. Let's find out what they do, who they are. These are the Arcturians, mm -hmm. and they um, no, they're telling me that they're doing this for me now because um, there's something about a shape. I want to be precise, please. Uh, we help you because we love you and we need you. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me more. I'm asking them to heal some sort of heaviness in my head. Mm -hmm. What's caused this heaviness? Cloudiness. Mm -hmm. Cigarettes come up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And tell me what they say. They say... <laughs> they have just the prettiest noises. Mm -hmm. um, they say it's, it's um, lifting like a sadness or a depression or a, just, um, a doubt that now they're in the heart. Mm -hmm. What's caused? All of the sadness in the heart. It's, it's just heavy. Mm -hmm. It's not too heavy here mm -hmm. for her, but it's heavy here for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, why is she here? Why did she incarnate in this heavy place? To bring the lightness, it's just simple, and to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the work should be easy. Mm -hmm. How is she doing so far? Getting, we are all very proud of her. Mm -hmm. um, but the Arturians say it's not their place to to make a judgment on that. Mm -hmm. They say to other people. They say also we are all very proud of her. Mm -hmm. Why is it that Kristen came in this incarnation? What was her her role? at this time on Gaia. You say to bring lightness, but tell me more. Uh, to create... Um, it's like she... she kind of skips along and floats along um, lightly with the inference on the earth and flowing there's like a silver sparkly kind of goldeny net a little bit mm -hmm. um,
<laughs> and she carries it along almost like a little fairy, you know, just mm -hmm. like hopping and lifting and... Um, Is this the grid that she sees? Yeah. So it's not really a grid, it's her net. No, no, it is a grid. Okay. Um, but it comes out like of her hand, like a little, you know, net, and and it's and it's soft and sparkly, and it goes up and up and um, imprints um, uh, adjusting. Adjusting and lightening and and um, adding adding like the 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 golden auras and and um, the white lights and the the crystal sparkles. Does she do this every time she uses her hands? Oh. She does like to use her hands. Mm -hmm. Because she works with people's hair all the time. Yeah. Is she doing some magic on people's heads? She's she's very careful. Mm -hmm. um, because um, she doesn't uh, she doesn't overstep um, and push people to to. Um, Places that 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 their systems can't handle, mm -hmm. um, so she just allows them to kind of guide the um, whatever they're receiving. Mm -hmm. um, I think she'd like to be m a little bit more kind of specific about it, mm -hmm. um, or conscious about it, knowing. Um, what they are receiving or what she is giving because I think sometimes it can catch her off guard at the end of the day you know um, uh, I think it's it's harder for her to hold back um, but it is what is required mm -hmm. much of the time well she tells me she wants to be able to see her tomorrows Yes. And is she even seeing her todays with all this net casting that she's doing? <laughs> well, um, this is, um, wait, there was something else about, about the, the energy, the sparkle energy. Mm -hmm. Tell um, her about the sparkle energy. Um, oh. Sometimes she likes it delivering. It's it's like it's it's always an energy that is um, delivering like like organization or alignment, um, and and so she does this also just simply like when talking and moving her hands. It's, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> maybe some call it psychic surgery, but it it is more of a, of just. A nice, just alignment mm -hmm. of her whole ah, her whole point of being here. Here we go. Mm -hmm. um, it's just to give whatever can be handled um, by the person in front of her. Um, uh, or uh, or the persons in her sphere to give um, sh it's funny because she has she has such this way of, of doing this mm -hmm. um, just an ease of of opening her whole point is to um, lead people to them own selves mm -hmm. you know that's it 
and and there's there's nothing more and 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 because of this um, kind of a broad net as you call it or or grid energy grid um, this is uh, an easy way to reach many people um, just so that there's more lightness here more lightheartedness more light laughter um, no you know no no need for for all the heavy, heavy, and maybe there's a need for it, but that's not her thing, mm -hmm. you know. Well, she tells me that she's very floaty most of the time. Yeah. Is this because of the sparkle energy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I think she thinks she would feel better. Um. Like it's it's safer now to kind of connect to the earth. Mm -hmm. So what's the best way for her to connect to the earth? <laughs> she likes to lay on her belly and imagine the big golden jewel encrusted rope to the core mm -hmm. from her belly button. Is that practical? It is practical. Okay, good. And this weight that she's been gaining, does that have anything to do with her trying to get herself anchored? Yeah. It's such a slower energy. Mm -hmm. And it bothers her. Mm -hmm. Why is it that she's got this slower energy in her body? Has she created it? For grounding purposes? No. Hmm. No, it's kind of come um, uh, just from grounding. Mm -hmm. um, it's just manifested as like a feeling of heaviness. Mm -hmm. um, and slowness and it, it somehow like it feels a little bit short circuity mm -hmm. so we're trying to adjust this very good can you do that while we're talking yeah thank you would you tell me more about her connection with the Arcturians Pleiadians and Syrians Pleiadians are home. Councils. Lots of interstellar councils. She's on these councils? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does she do there? Because she had a crown Syrians on her head. Are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Syrians, we talk. Um, I love the Arcturians mm -hmm. and they're just practical things that need to be done. The Arcturians are the ones who help her with that? Yes, the Arcturians, but also the Syrians. The Syrians are very practical mm -hmm. and um, there's a Their house, their house over there, their place is so busy. Mm -hmm. In which place? And where the Syrians are. Mm -hmm. Busy in a good way? There's just a lot, a lot there. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a, like a whole wide range of energies there. Mm -hmm. How does she use that in her life here? Hmm. That relationship and that information. The Syrians come through when we need logic mm -hmm. and practicality. The Arcturians are such sweet healers and 
very precise and then um, Pleiadians they're just so heart centered mm -hmm. you said it was home it does feel cozy there mm -hmm. does she go there between lifetimes yeah mm -hmm. can you show her her home there very clean very um there's like a lot of white with um some sparkles and some blue and some is she alone or does she have family there? people there. Mm -hmm. What does she look like when she lives in the, in the Pleiades? Is it the same as on the ship? Yeah, she looks the same, but I don't know that she lives there, maybe. I mean, there are palaces there, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel like hers. It's like, um, like a really nice business trip. Mm -hmm. So let's find out where she is from, where this crown comes from, and why. Hmm. Where she has this crown. Hybrid. Hybrid. Some sort of... Mm -hmm. Tell me more. I'd like to connect now with the one who really knows everything about her. She's a queen in charge of relation. She's a queen in charge of relations? Yes. What kind of relations? Some relations. Mm -hmm. um, There is council. Mm -hmm. Who's on this council with her? There's a there's a masculine male. Um, it's a little bit shorter and stockier with kind of a roundy, squarey head. Mm -hmm. What does he do on the council? He's very sharp. He's sharp? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does she get along with him? We like him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's so useful and so nice. Mm -hmm. um, and brave. Mm -hmm. He's brave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. What else do you see? There's like a curvy green. I don't know what that is. 
just looks comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, is it a being? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's it's a light thing. A light being? Uh -huh. Yeah, a light one. Mm -hmm. Does it have any humanoid features? Does it have arms or legs? No. It's just light? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's that green. Green light. It's green light. Very good. And is it a male or female feeling? Mm, none. None. No gender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what is this being's role on the council? It feels like an orb around my head. Mm. And what purpose does this orb do around your head? We communicate. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, yeah, so normally, normally we just are, um, you know, uh, everything, everything's lighter, 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 lighter. And then we go, and we go to the nice places like the Pleiades and we talk. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and and we organize things, must organize mm -hmm. things, and then um, we make a plan of how to make a, to help with this shift, because there's many, 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 many councils and many, many things. And so, you know, we all must work together and, and uh, and they bring me through, um, yeah, so they bring me through so that, um, it's like a steady stream of light, you know, there's mm -hmm. no, um, uncorrupted is a word. Mm -hmm. um, what do you mean by they take, they bring you through the steady stream of light? As a steady stream of light. As a steady stream of light. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, and and I agree, and they agree to take care of me. Mm -hmm. um, what and do you so need to do with the shift? All of this, all of this with the grids and with the, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> tinsel, it's all, it's all such fun, funny work, um, but it, uh -huh. it does get heavy and so that's why sometimes we get to go back on the ship and mm. Now she told me that she saw a ship while she was going to work one day. Whose mm. ship was that? Pleiadians. Pleiadians. What were they trying to tell her? Um, we're here for you. Okay. And oh, and um, maybe, maybe I had just been there. Mm hmm. Um, because. There was a lot of healing. The Arturians were doing a lot, a lot of healing mm -hmm. around there. They're still right now so healing on my heart and chest and, mm -hmm. and legs. So she's being taken onto the ship through in between time space? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is that in between time space? Like not in her human body. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if she's driving her car, and it's just seeing a spaceship. Oh, it was like a reminder. Ah, I see. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, yeah. She was in her car. Okay. We didn't take her from there. Okay, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, no, no. I was wondering if you had stopped time and taken her at that moment. No, you know, we normally, we don't, we don't need to stop the time. It's okay. Okay. Um, How do you take people and heal them? Well... It's for her, it's it's a it's a, um, a group effort. Okay. She agrees. Mm -hmm. um, 
but don't don't rob her of anything. She knows she's she knows what she is and who she who she needs to have with her and and. Uh, And so, um... Well, she may know who she is with the Arcturians and the Pleiadians, but she doesn't really know who she is here yeah, well, on planet Earth. Because when we come here, we forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some kind of... It's, it's, um, the body itself is is very 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 dense here mm -hmm. um, where she's from she can have a body if she wants or not it's not necessary um, so when she visits the spaceships mm, it's not her physical body is it n no but she does carry the subtle bodies so all the bodies that are attached you know that go to make up this one mm -hmm. physical form mm -hmm. um, she she takes she takes some of those so that they can work on the etheric bodies and the, and the mm -hmm. um, frequencies to uh, you know straighten things out and good now she was questioning about density hmm she wants to filter pure, clean system, clear system. Yeah. How can she do that? Uh, yeah. Let's do that better. Mm -hmm. Is it an adjustment that she needs? Yeah. It's in this. It's in this form. Mm -hmm. Um. Where um. We're doing something on her feet right now. Okay. Do you use energy? Do you use frequency? What do you use on her feet? This is um, this is like a magnet. Okay, magnetic energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does that do? We're providing an anchor. Okay. Um. Yeah, the planet is nice now to anchor. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, you know, the magnet can be released. It's okay. Okay. Um, but um, yo, we're just uh, stretching her up, giving her more better pol pol poles, you know, pol polarized or polar, you know. Stretching. Okay. So that so that there's an anchor in the deep deep in the earth. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't need to lie in her belly and anchor. She can anchor with her feet after this. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. She could do the belly thing if she likes. It's fun. Okay. Um, and it is it is actually helpful to use the reminder whether she's like sitting or. Um, laying on her belly. It's a helpful reminder. Um, now you said something has changed with the earth. Has the earth already shifted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to me why the earth had to make a change and what did the shift do to the earth? Right. Um, yeah, what is, what is the point of this? Mm -hmm. and why are we here? The Palladians need this. Why do the Palladians need the Earth to shift? Well, I mean, it's not just the Palladians. I mean, what the Palladians need, we all need. Mm -hmm. um, they, um, you know, they they seeded this planet. They're in, invested here. Mm -hmm. um, so what was happening to this planet that it needed to shift, needed to evolve? It's like a life cycle. Mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, it, uh, it's a, it's a cosmic but natural life cycle that all things, even planets, go through. Mm -hmm. um, and all of her beautiful inhabitants. Mm -hmm. And um, so it is a transition. Does and everyone feel it? Uh, they must on some level, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're seeing it just so uh, hilariously broadcasted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I don't know that everyone recognizes it as a as a change or as a shift, but I mean, what, what are the kind of things that are happening that are proof of this shift, this change? There are no more secrets mm -hmm. on this planet, and there is no lack of information. Everyone has access to everything, um, and uh, the young ones, the new ones, they are um, they are allowing a stronger. Uh, it's more like they're uh, disallowing some things. For a time, there was there was some uh, things on the planet th where the planet was a little bit kind of vulnerable, mm -hmm. and so um, some. whatever kind of malicious or mm -hmm. dark forces dark forces mm -hmm. if you like to call it that uh, you know um, took a bit of a hold here mm -hmm. and so um, it's funny though because it's always been a protected planet mm -hmm. um, and so So what's happened mm -hmm. now? Has that darkness been lifted or is it lifting now? Yes. Um, yes, as a natural life cycle as well. So maybe it's two things that were happening. There's a life cycle. Um, and this planet in particular, when it went through its vulnerable stage, was um, you know, a little bit overly at attacked, or, or you know, more dark forces came than than were necessary. So there's um, uh, now there's there's um, more more light being called to help with a natural transition. Mm -hmm. um. So horror is an important one here. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. What did she do before she came to Earth? What was her cosmic role then? Yeah, it was... Um, she... Uh, she could mostly live uh, you know, without her body. Mm. Um, very the colors there are just where is that so beautiful for somehow I see it like above a ba a veil maybe you know like how that aura was around that planet or that horizon or mm -hmm. something somehow just above that. So is this the planet where she was before? The one you're describing now? No, it's it's a. Uh, doesn't because doesn't feel like a planet right now. When she first started seeing, she saw a planet with an orb around it, and she was watched looking at it 
from that bed on that spaceship. Mm -hmm. Was that something that she had been doing previously? Had she been injured in some way working on that? Hmm. What was the purpose of showing her that planet with the blue around it? Did she know that planet? Mm -hmm. What role did she play with that planet? Dig deeper, please. Go back now to the time before you were on that spaceship, finding out about that planet looking at that planet, what was your role? There's, um, deep, deep navy blue there. Mm -hmm. And my violet is a strong aura there. Mm -hmm. What does the violet do for that planet? It like softens it somehow. Mm -hmm. um, what relationship do you have with this planet? Are you there just to help it? I don't, I don't know, I feel like I'm like walking, like very intently. Mm -hmm. um, Where are you walking? I don't know, but the aura is like uh, all, all there. Mm -hmm. Is you walking intently through this planet, does it do something deliberate to the planet? Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also I'm looking at specific things there. Or Tell me what you see. Um, I'm looking at the energies, so mostly I see this navy blue, and then I see my violet, and then um, <laughs> it's funny, like as I walk and whatever energies I see I have like a like a laser um, from my forehead mm -hmm. um, and it's just a simple focus and a lift um, no a lot of hand gestures needed there it's much cleaner mm -hmm. um, you know that you can move the energy much quicker mm -hmm. It's a lighter planet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. So what is it that's coming out of your forehead? What kind of energy is that? Would you identify that, please? Some white. What is the white light from your forehead doing to this planet? Just little adjustments. Mm -hmm. It's almost like maintenance. Okay. There, um, just you know, taking a look around and mm -hmm. 
Um, and it, the light, it comes in through the crown and out the forehead. So, still, I'm just like a, I'm a vessel mm -hmm. and, and... You're and just the conduit of that light? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're passing it through. Yeah. Okay. And it's so nice and so easy and it's, um, it's, it's a beautiful power, you know, it's, it's just, it's a relationship. Okay. Mm. Are there any other beings on this planet? I don't see any right now. Mm -hmm. So is this a, a new planet or is this a planet that you're just maintaining? Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be used for something. Okay. Um, Very good. Yeah, the planet itself is nice. It's kind of quiet. Okay, good. So let's disconnect from that. Okay. And I'd like to ask, since she does maintenance on these planets, she's been doing a lot of work with women, mm. pregnancies and deliveries. Hmm. But in this lifetime, she's chosen not to have children on her own. What is it that she's birthing in these classes? Maybe she'll have children. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, birthing more divine light that's for people to experience. Mm -hmm. They want it, you know, the people. They just... They don't, they don't yet know how to access it and it's so simple mm -hmm. you know um, just a few little adjustments and and uh, she's you know she's trained with all this you know experience working one on one with the clients and mm -hmm. people um, to not overdo I think this is very important for her um, so well, she wanted to expand more yes. on teaching women about the significance of connecting with this soul that's inside of them. Yeah. That being that they are creating. Would you tell me why it is so important for a woman to connect with the being that they're creating? So that the baby can be prepared. Mm -hmm. um, so that the mother doesn't have to be afraid of delivery. Mm -hmm. um, so that the mother and the baby know that it's their, it is a thing that they do together, um, mother and baby. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, they both must be present and they both must be aware and connected mm -hmm. to each other. Um, this provides the child with her or his own sense of sovereignty from the beginning and it allows the mother to um, understand that that the being that is coming is in her care for some time but is not hers. Mm -hmm. um, it's very important um, that there is a little bit, a little bit of softness in that relationship so that the child has more room, you know, um, boundaries are shifting and, and, uh, you know, the children that are coming are, are smarter and brighter and, and they need more space. Um, so how can a mother, when they know that they're pregnant, mm -hmm. how can they make that pregnancy optimal? Not only for the family, but for the baby? Yeah. Um, there's so many tools. Mm -hmm. um, Spiritually, what would be the best way? Spiritually, they, they must practice, they must practice connecting with the baby, with the baby, mm -hmm. 
Yes, um, before the soul enters, and and then as the soul enters, they talk to the baby and you know and prepare them for earth life. Because I think many many children that are coming now have not been here before, mm -hmm. um, so they need to know. You know, um, this is this is a car, and this is a mm -hmm. this. Yeah, these these are all teachings that are available here on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, now you mentioned the soul coming into the body. Mm -hmm. I've heard it from the other end, when the soul is being sent into the body. But when does the soul enter the mother's body? Does it come and go? Is it right before birth? Is it? This is an earth thing, so mm -hmm. the teaching that I'm aware of is that it comes in on the 120th day, so mm -hmm. about three months in. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard many mothers say they've had an experience of this soul coming mm -hmm. before they had felt maybe the soul around them. Mm -hmm. um, and then they feel the soul more within their belly. Mm -hmm. um, and it is nice to be aware of this. Mm -hmm. Does the soul ever come in at the last moment? Um, I suppose. I think. I think it would be a little bit awkward. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that there's any hard rule that says no. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right. Very good. Now she's had many traumatic experiences mm. being very young. I want to ask two questions about that. First, was this her first incarnation here? Has she been on Earth before? No. No. And another question is, why did she choose the parents that she did? A message came the other day that they are host parents. Mm -hmm. um, more important was the timing of the arrival. Mm -hmm. um, they're lovely, lovely people, and and uh, she got she's got to do some good work with. With them, and they they really um, the the traumatic experiences uh, that they so graciously delivered um, were uh, <laughs> a very sharp way to attune her hmm. to the frequency that was um, prevailing on the planet. So she had to endure all of this just to get used to being a human on this dense planet? Is that what? I mean, I think maybe it could have been done a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. So who chose that experience? Did she choose that? Or did something happen to the person doing this to her? Mm. Can we go back to that time, please? Okay. All right. I'm going to count from five back to one. And when I get to number one, we will be at that first experience to find out what was causing all of this. Five, going back in time now, through time and space. Four, getting younger and younger. Three, Two and one. Be there now. Tell me where you are. On the couch, mm -hmm. looking out the window, mm -hmm. uh, like over the top of the couch, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Yeah. <clears throat> um, 
so I've already um, I've already run this mm -hmm. experience. So I want you to detach yourself from that experience and I want you to see that experience now as a soul connecting with the other soul. Uh, mm -hmm. Allow yourself now to leave that body and see it from a soul's perspective. So he was not super present. He, mm -hmm. um, he was already very under the influence of drugs. All right. So let's see who it was that was controlling him. Mm. Take a look and see. What does it look like? It's dark and mm -hmm. red. And, mm -hmm. and let's find out the reason why that dark red energy, that entity, is attached to this person. What's it doing there? It says because it can. Mm -hmm. And it's using him for, um, uh, it was like his frequencies were tuned to kind of match it, and so it's using it. Mm -hmm. It feels so gross, make it stop. All right, so you're going to use your hand <coughs> and send out that net of sparkle energy and wrap that energy in that. Use your energy now. Completely in net it. Send out that energy. Intensify it. And tell me what happens to this energy as it's wrapped in your net of sparkles. Okay, it feels like a, like it's not creepy. Mm-hmm. So now we can find out why it needed this energy. You don't need to connect with it, but you will just know yeah. what it was that caused this energy to be so angry, so needy. Yeah, what happened to it? Mm -hmm. It was using, it was using him. Mm -hmm. um, what did he need? from you? Nothing. I mean, he could get nothing, which was so sad. And he just mm -hmm. kept coming back over and over. Nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, such basic sense pleasures and, and mm -hmm. just it's so basic. It's just, I mean, a worthless kind of, you know. Mm -hmm. So as you have this energy in this net, mm -hmm. I want you to go ahead and connect mm. with this energy and tell this energy to look for that God spark within its heart. Remind this energy that it is a light from source also. Yeah. If this is, um, I see, um, little diamond in there. Mm -hmm. So just like you've done on that blue planet, I want you to go ahead and channel that source energy and out through that third eye and go ahead and begin expanding that little diamond of light Please. within this energy's heart. Like little tickles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make it as bright as possible so that this energy will completely detach now and go back home to the light. When you feel that it is as expanded as possible, you can let go of the net so that it could go back home. Okay. Tell me what happened. I feel this real. It happened. It floated like a fluffy. It shrank, shrank, shrank first, like mm -hmm. all the other stuff 
kind of melted off and then it just floated. Wonderful. So now as we allow ourselves to go through that scene, I want you to see how different the results were of that day. Feel the lightness. I feel sick. Mm -hmm. Let's find out why. My stomach. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's in your stomach. Okay. Take a look. Mm. What's in that stomach? It's hard. Mm -hmm. Is this something that was put there or did you create it? Mm. What's in that stomach? Now it feels slimy. Mm -hmm. Does this slimy thing in your stomach have a voice? Yes. All right, let me take my hand. I'm going to put my hand over your stomach and I'm going to bring that energy up. Up, 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 up. All right, you can express yourself now. Can you tell me who or what you are? Sluggy. What is it? Sluggy. Sluggy. How did you get in her stomach? What are you doing in her stomach? It's cozy in there. Mm -hmm. How did you get in there, Sluggy? Hoop. A hoop? How did you get in there? Sluggy, how old <coughs> was she when you got into her stomach? It was a while ago. Mm -hmm. Tell me how old she was. Mm, yeah, three. Three. Sluggy, did that dark energy put you in that stomach? Well. Are you part of that? <laughs> uh. Who put you in her stomach? Yeah, I got to come. I got to come in here. You got to come in here. Yeah. Mm hmm. Where were you, Sluggy, before? In him. In him. Do you see that he's gone home to the light, Sluggy? And you're just feeling sick in there. Yeah. Do you need to be there anymore, Sluggy? Girl, screen now. Mm hmm. Sluggy, would you like to be somewhere else, yeah. feeling better? All right. So, Sluggy, we're going to go ahead and begin sending you wonderful energy. She's going to use her net mm. that comes from her hands, and she's going to envelop you in that beautiful, sparkly light net. Feel how wonderful it feels mm -hmm. to be wrapped in that love. And within you, Sluggy, is that same spark of light that created everything imaginable. That light from Source. Sluggy, find that light from Source within you. And as she holds you in her net, go ahead and begin expanding that light within you. And tell me what you look like now. Diamonds, very good. What would you like to tell Kristen before you go? Thanks. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath in. Kristen, are you ready to release these diamonds? Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. How would you like to release them? Through my hands. Very good. Go ahead and begin releasing them back up to source. And as you do, we can now use that same light that you use to change the frequencies. Go ahead and direct that light of yours into your stomach and begin healing that stomach. I want to have tears. All right. Tell me what happens to your stomach now. A lot of repairs in there. Mm -hmm. Micro. Go ahead.
ahead and flood it with light. Yeah. What's the best healing light you can think of right now to flood it with? Is that clear? 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 Tell me when you're done. There's still a heat. Yes, the stomach is good now. Mm -hmm. She does have to use the restroom. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, touch your shoulder, and when I do, you open your eyes. I'll take off the microphones. You'll still remain in this wonderful trance. When you come back, you'll go even deeper. Eyes open. Good job. Taking a very, very clean breath of air and feeling how that air now goes through that blood. Tell me how that feels. I'm letting the Arcturians go with their lasers. Yeah. What are the Arcturians doing? Have um, these are frequencies through the crown chakra. Many, many. For but they're like. So they were like these, like horizontal um, uh, laser beams that moved back and forth, scan, 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 scan. They just do it so quickly. Mm -hmm. Much quicker than we can do here. Mm -hmm. So how does her body look now after the Arcturians have gone through it? Yes, we look better. Mm -hmm. Lighter. There's a lot of gunk gone. Wonderful. So now as a non-smoker, how is her life going to change? Hmm. Let's make it nice. Mm -hmm. Let's make it easy. Let's, um, let's allow allow good breath habits mm -hmm. to come in. Um, there's a lot of vibration right now in the throat, mm -hmm. and uh, this is, things will be said more clearly mm -hmm. in voice and in delivery. Yeah. So her intuition, her clairvoyance will be clear too? Oh yeah, better ears are better, mm -hmm. sinuses, mm -hmm. way deep back of the throat. Mm -hmm. More sounds come now. More range of sounds. Wonderful. Now she also wanted to have new success patterns and channels regarding her sexual creative energy. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tell me what has blocked her creative energy so far. What is causing that? Well, she just, she kind of um, kept it very quiet and didn't allow it full, full play. Mm -hmm. um, for fear of um, Really, for fear of stepping in darkness, mm -hmm. it's a very specific foot move, and so right now um, feels like um, like the sexual energy from the ovaries and 
through the uterus down there's lots of um, beautiful beautiful dark energy flowing down and out through the feet so that it is um, like a, a garnet wonderful yeah wonderful well now her creative energies improve as far as her painting her music yeah 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 let's do more with the guitar now that the heart's more softer from no lung problems mm -hmm. there can be more there painting yeah mm -hmm. painting and drawing Mm -hmm. She tells me that she's very easily distracted. Mm. What was causing that? Hmm. Feels like that garnet energy helped. Okay. Good. Um, yeah. Will she be able to focus more now? Can we request assistance from the Arcturians regarding her focus? She'll mm. need it with her new website, with her new business. Yes. The Syrians are here with this too because it's um, kind of crucial to uh, not be so easily knocked around. Mm -hmm. um, so let's... Um, Stay steady. It's okay. No matter what other thing is barking or mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, this is um, block it out. So I'm getting block it out. Stay focused. Just that that is of no concern. Good. Now it seems that when she was younger and things happened to her, she would go places. Hmm. Where did she go when things were happening to her? Did she go back on the ship? Where did she go? She liked to go play. Mm -hmm. It was pretty quiet that she liked. She likes things quiet. She couldn't quite get all the way um, to her uh, kind of natural realm. Mm -hmm. So she would go to the... Um, to the quiet places with the with the soothing dark. Okay. Um she liked that. We were there. Um so a lot of alone time though. Does she need this alone time? It is very settling to her. Mm-hmm. But she meditates. Yeah. Does she find this alone place there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, yeah, and from there, you know, she travels a lot from there. Mm -hmm. Where does she go when she's meditating? She goes so many places. Mm -hmm. She goes all over this planet. She really likes the forest here. Mm -hmm. And um, she comes up um, and uh, we go. We spend spend some time here in the galaxy mm -hmm. um, tooling around and checking on things and okay. she likes that she likes to know the things that are going on around here mm -hmm. good but she does have a tie to earth right now she has a strong tie to her mom yeah. what's going on there with her mom there was this like kind of karmic debt created because mm -hmm. she played in she, you know, the mother is, she's so, she wants to be so generous and, um, Kristen couldn't, she, she couldn't, she couldn't say no, mm -hmm. um, to kind of, um, you know, playing into, uh, her mother's, um, kind of story or whatever mm -hmm. um, she got a little bit caught and it's a little bit karmic mm -hmm. um, so there was some debt um, 
etheric and uh, financial mm -hmm. that is entangled. Where is she connected to? On her body? To her mom? The belly. The belly. Would it be a good thing to do today to disconnect that so that she doesn't have that connection in that way anymore? Would it benefit her? Yes, the mother will need to have um, like a, a patch on her belly mm -hmm. um, and and will need to have some uh, soothing and radiance in her heart. All right. Now we know that Kristen has those hands that is able to do that. And we begin now by disconnecting. Yes. All right. Before we do that, I'd like for Kristen to connect with her mom and get permission to be disconnected. Yes, it's okay. Very good. So go ahead and disconnect your side and mom's side. You can cut it, you can pull it out. And using those hands now, I'd like for you to go ahead and patch both sides. Use that energy of the sparkling mm -hmm. net coming from your hands. Tell me what it looks mm -hmm. like. I just finished mine. It was just a little gold, mm -hmm. a little sound. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, to the mothers. Just slowly winding the cord, winding, mm -hmm. winding, mm -hmm. so as not to be pulled. And, um, It's turning the cord now a different color mm. um, just to make it easier. Good. Sparkle, like an iridescent white. Mm -hmm. um, this makes it soft. Soft, same on her belly. Iridescent white. Blend it all together first. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Good. Yeah. Are they complete now? Her heart. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and connect mm -hmm. with mom and allow, tell her what's happening so that she's in agreement with it. Yeah. She says okay. Very good. So, um, she says thank you. Mm -hmm. So we'll put some blue blue healing at the back spine, just under the heart, the, the base of the ribs, and then it comes up the spine like a, a blue, it's going into white, it's um, very cooling, it's okay, um, it's very cleansing. And then around the shoulders and down the rib cage. Mm -hmm. We make her heart have more room. Her heart is good. Good. Mm, just needs some space. Wonderful. And now that her heart and her uh, stomach mm -hmm. are now free. How will that help her as far as her business, her future, her energy, her creativity? The mother is now free. Mm -hmm. um, she has big plans for her life. Good. I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. um, and this one. Yeah, good. Just no debt. No debt. Yeah, no, no debt. No, nothing owed. Mm -hmm. um, it's very just clean and and um, 
And still I was so in love. Mm -hmm. um, now we know that she works with the uh, Arcturians, the Pleiadians, and the Syrians. Does she also work with any of the angelic realm? She loves the angels. They play. They come sit their wings on her back and mm -hmm. fly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So can I request a guide, an angel, to work with her yeah. on her endeavor to create this school, this online school for children, to create her website, to help her launch this dream that she has? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a nice sensation mm -hmm. um, we keep it we angels we keep it very very light mm -hmm. you know um, uh, so it's good that we can work together now with those magnets that she's got very good to keep her grounded yeah mm -hmm. and then we uh, launch is such a nice fun word mm -hmm. good yeah, we'll very good now she would like to have a relationship in the future. She's looking for a companion, someone who will now match the same frequencies that she has that will help her in her life, that she can be a partner with, not only in her life, but her work and enjoy. She definitely wants... Uh <laughs> her words, God incarnate. Mm -hmm. um, so can I request for the angels to go out there and start looking for these gods incarnate? To yes. send them her way so that she can have a companion, a partner, someone she could love and be loved by. Yeah. Thank you. Now she was curious about the multiverse. How mm -hmm. is that affecting her, this one-time person on earth how is she living her life in other places so this is funny this multiverse because um it is uh i mean dimensional dimensional is such a fun word here because uh it has it has so many meanings and and you know, somehow it's like spheres upon spheres or layers upon layers and these kinds of things um, or you know maybe all existing in the same space but on different linear mm -hmm. things these are so, these are uh, all very abstract terms for multi-dimensional or multiverses mm -hmm. um, and they're all correct um, so, the thing about the multiverse for her right now is that um, she hasn't found a way to um, go to her place from here. Mm -hmm. um, The, the Pleiadians know, though, so that's okay. Good. Yeah. Good. Now we've done a scan of her body. How does it look? Look good now? Yeah, it's okay. a little bit sore from the, mm -hmm. from the work, but it's okay. Good. Is there anything she needs to know in the next few days from this work? Well, water. Mm, lots of water? Mm. Good, good. Well, is there anything else that I could have asked today? That you didn't, that you'd like to tell her now. Yes, there's something about um, this flyer. She's making a flyer. This is a very practical thing. Mm -hmm. um, as she sits down to draw this flyer, the next time she sits down to draw this. It will be the right one. And, and it's um, the success of this. The success of this 
is guaranteed. Okay, thank you so much. Now I have a question for you. Why did you bring Kristen all the way over to see me? What was the purpose on your part? She's having so many doubts. It was too hard to watch anymore. She needed earthly um, intervention, intervention, <laughs> confirmation, mm -hmm. all of that. Good. Has she gotten it today? Yes. Good. Please strengthen this in her heart and in her knowing that that this is like that solid steel rod thing. That this is um, unwavering. Very good. So before we finish up, I'm going to go ahead and put some rose quartz on her heart. Hmm. And we'll begin to fortify that heart, strengthening that heart up as it brings in all of those frequencies. I'd like to ask right now for the Arcturians to send a beam of light into her heart through that quartz fortifying it so that she can continue on her path being able to use that heart for love and for strength and for compassion all of the things that are needed to be here on this planet to help in her own unique way and as they continue, I'd like to ask, are we complete today? Yes, we feel good. Very good. Thank you very much. Wide awake feeling wonderful. All over. Welcome back. Thank you. How do you feel? Feel good? I do. I feel so good. I feel... Um. Let me switch those up. Let me give you the Shanghai. Mm. We have the other one. Let's get you grounded even more. Wow, what a session, huh? Mm. Mm. These are strong Shanghai. They are strong. A lot of vibration. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, let's take this one from me too. So now, we wrote, we wrote a little bit of your past. Yeah. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, I was kind of nervous to do that. I know, but didn't it turn out nice? Yeah, it was better. <laughs> yeah, because I don't need to carry that. None oh. of that needs to just... But you know that we needed to take care of... We needed to go down the line. And that's what you did. Oh, you yeah. Helped, you helped disappear what created it all. Oh, good. Mm. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. So is this something you want to share? Sure. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I don't think there's anything in there. No, there's nothing weird in there. Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, it all seems perfectly normal to me. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness! So that was wild. Was it? Yeah. Well, it was normal for you, but it was. It was. We did a lot of stuff. We did do a lot of stuff. You know. Yeah. You, you, went, you realized this was your first time here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of thought that yeah. too. And and you started out on a spaceship That's with the Arcturians. Right. I mean, you were you had a crown. You had you were tall. Yeah, and I was in this like capsule kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I wonder, like, if at that point you being worked on. Yeah, but I wonder. I would definitely. They, yeah. Yeah. They. Yeah. And the little noises that they were making. Oh, they make the prettiest noises. Mm -hmm. And they're like... And what do they look like? Oh, so they're blue and they have these like... Like lovely things that come up like this. What did I call them? Turrets? Yeah, spirals. <laughs> spirals? So were they part of the skin or... Yeah. They were blue? Blue. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Really pretty blue. And do they look like a, like a humanoid body? Mm-hmm. But their faces were kind of fishy. Fish was the best word I had to describe this kind of like spirals on their heads. They weren't necessarily spirals. They were like like um, spires. I think is what spires. I said. Oh, spires. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like little peaks on their heads. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. How that, many did they have? 
uh, eight wow. comes to mind. Wow. Yeah, all the way around. Wow, like yeah. a crown. Like a crown. So you you had that too. The crown? You had a crown. Yeah, but it was all the way around mm. this way. Was it part of your head? Maybe. Or it, <laughs> Maybe it felt <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you felt like you had something on your head. You were like a queen. Yeah. But I wonder if it was a natural crown. Maybe. It's interesting. Yeah, because it because definitely there was some type of hybrid thing going yeah. on. Yeah. Um. So you may have had half Arcturian, mm -hmm. maybe with the the spires. Maybe. Know. And half, maybe Pleiadian or... Mm -hmm. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And we talked about uh, the children, uh, how they come into the the soul, how the oh. mother has to... Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, how the mom has to talk to the, the baby. This is actually a yogic teaching. Mm. Um, that's what I was saying. There, there are um, definite tools here mm -hmm. for... So um, tell everybody... About, about the importance of when you're pregnant, even before you're pregnant, I would think. Yeah, conscious conception is, is um, really worthwhile, you know, if, if you're thinking of bringing a child into the earth, a lot of mothers will kind of speak to their child, um, like, before, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I even knew um, one woman who, um, she was so connected with her child, and she told, she said, okay, well, go find your dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, so that they can connect, right? right. That's so, so yeah, it was really cute. And so, you know, there's a lot of work that you can do with these beings off planet, mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of work that can be done. Um, this is a deep yogic teaching. Um, Kundalini yoga is an easy place to find that, mm -hmm. um, uh, where um, you can teach. You, you know, you can teach a baby about this planet. Before it's even born. Before it's born. So, so while you're pregnant, talk to your baby. Yeah. Uh, give it lessons. Uh, I mean, I would say talk to talk to him or her about the family. Yeah. Talk about how the the planet works. Uh, things like that. It's, Absolutely. Right? Yeah, all of that stuff. Because all of them, these, these that are coming in are pretty new souls. I think. Yeah, a They've lot of them. Been here before, like this one. Yeah. And so you. It's have a to strange learn. place. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. Yeah, and, and the energies are really different too, so I think it's nice to talk to them about the energies and also um, uh, the, the, the birthing process. Ah, that was very important, that the baby has to be a part of it. Yeah. You can't be afraid of this, you have to be part of it, because the baby is pushing out while doing all this too. I mean, the, the baby has a very, very important process. Yeah. It, and could we avoid a lot of C-sections? Um, if we talk to the babies, would you think that there would be less fear? Yeah, I do. I mean, I don't, now I I will say that I don't think that if a C-section happens, I don't think it's bad. No, or, no, but I mean, you know, some of them maybe the the, the baby is in um, distress. Distress. The pregnancy. Exactly. And, and I had that. Happen. And I had that with mine. Yeah. I had an excellent pregnancy, but I was terrified. I was per personally terrified. Of the birthing process, yeah. I'm, I'm a weenie for pain. Well, it's, it's <laughs> such an unfamiliar right? kind of thing. You so, mean. well, when I went into labor, um, my baby was tiny. There was no reason. And you're so tiny. And I'm tiny. Yeah. But the baby went to distress, and I, he had to be cut out. But there was no reason. He had a beautiful, it was a beautiful pregnancy. Mm. But I was personally terrified of the birthing process. I didn't want any pain and yeah. and that's what I was afraid of and he went into distress. Because you because wouldn't I mean, let him out. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, you feel good here. <laughs> maybe you shouldn't come out. <laughs> but maybe it had to do did yeah. you did you feel anything in your hips? Like sometimes I mm, I don't remember this is many, many, many years ago. So yeah. sometimes I feel like I see a lot of women that hold fear in their yeah. hips. Mm, interesting. Especially during pregnancy because there's so much expansion that goes on right uh -huh. there that it's natural to want to contract it back. Could be, yeah. Sciatica pain. Absolutely. So there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So so a good thing yeah. for all pregnant mommies is um um, and this is a yogic teaching. Again, check out Kundalini Yoga. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's just the one thing I found that makes it easy to deliver things on this planet. Um, 
So there, there are lots of things. Wonderful. Uh, so what is it that you do? I mean, wh where are you coming from, and, and what is it that you do and that could help other people? Uh, here? On this planet? Yes, on this planet. On this planet. <laughs> <laughs> on this planet, I am a hairstylist. Um, mm -hmm. I have a small studio hair salon in Beverly Hills. I love it there. Um, mm -hmm. I've created a really lovely home. I've had this business for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, me and my clients, we have a ton of fun doing their hair. Um, lots of, uh, lots of, lots of young people. Lots of like East Side, you know, LA people. Um, you know, very, uh, I don't know, whatever. Um, lots of musicians. Lots of people. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's a fun energy to work with. It, you know, fun. these these young people. Good. And I'm also. Um, I'm only in there a couple of days a week, so we you know we're starting the website, and mm -hmm. I have a lot of love for hairdressers in general. I think you know it's such a compassionate career; everyone yes. gets into it for some sort of service, yes. even if they don't know it. So um, that's uh, that's the next step for me. Good. So, do you recommend this experience? A hundred percent. And did it feel like what you thought it was going to feel like? I I thought that I would. Um, feel a little more kind of like lo loose in my consciousness. <laughs> I felt so kind of grounded that my brain was like, this is a fractal. And I'm like, <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, but I also did feel um, that I was able to be uh, really like authentic or truthful. Like I didn't feel like... Um, I felt like I could have manipulated it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think that it would have stuck. You know what I'm right. saying? Like right. I feel like you would have been like, no. Right. So, right. so I felt I felt secure in that too, and that helped me. I think feel really safe to just not have to do that. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And if you'd like a session with me, go to my website albawyman.com. If you go to the out of town page on my website, on the bottom you'll see. Uh, a newsletter sign up, that's the only way to get sessions with me. You can't just call me and get a session. Um, once a month, approximately, I send out a newsletter. Sometimes I'll send them out in areas in the different country of where I'm going to be. But this newsletter will tell you where I'm going to next. And you've got to be really fast and sign up because they go within minutes. Okay? So, I yeah. waited for like over a year, <laughs> or close to a year maybe. Was it worth it? So, so worth it. Yeah, and yeah. you came here exactly when you needed to. Yeah, it's funny yes. how that worked out. It always works out that way. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope I get to meet you sometime soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>